Hello and welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Over the last few weeks, I have been talking about the brand new starter set for the awesome tabletop skirmish game Moonstone by Goblin King Games. I have unboxed and reviewed the starter, and taken a closer look at the Leisure Vault and Shades of Moonreach factions included. You will find links to all of that in the video description below. Today, with Halloween just around the corner, I thought it was the perfect time to round out my coverage by talking about the creepy critters known as the Psychopomps. Many of the new Shades characters have the ability to summon Psychopomps, and even though the new starter set does include two tokens you can use, I recommend the Psychopomps box as an early purchase for anybody looking to expand their Shades army for three main reasons. 1. This box contains 6 Psychopomps, and they are all beautifully sculpted with their own unique personalities. They are an absolute delight, and a clear improvement over cardboard tokens. 2. In the starter set, you get one character who can summon Soldier Psychopomps, and one soldier who can summon Familiar Psychopomps. As there are 2 soldiers and 2 familiars in this box, that means you are able to bring up to 4 Psychopomps into play, rather than just 2. Even if you don't want to summon them all, you have more choices over which ones you do want to use. And 3. With these 6 Psychopomps, you can purchase any other Shades box, safe in the knowledge you will have the necessary Psychopomps to fully utilise your new characters. 4 of the 6 models in this box are single piece, you just have to glue them to a 30mm base. The Terrible Musician and Sir Pidge are in 2 parts, but they go together very easily, and just look at the results. These are gorgeous. They are very small, like the old familiars from Citadel Miniatures, but packed with character and detail. I absolutely adore Jeremy, Lord of the Deep. He looks so brilliantly pompous with his feathered cap and monocle. The strangest is the Tea Cake of Torment, with a bite taken out of its head. And no, I don't want to hear any nonsense about bread rolls and tunnocks. That guy is full of raisins. Now, Psychopomps are supporting players to the main cast of your troop. They each have one specific skill, and generally act like mobile buffs that you can move around the table to assist where necessary. And we will look at all of those skills in a moment. But first, I wanted to talk more generally about what Psychopomps are good for, because obviously, you can't expect much of them in a fight. Each Psychopomp is a Thrall. This means they can only enter play through being summoned. They do not activate and never gain energy, but instead, when the character that summoned them activates, the Psychopomp can take actions using the summoner's energy, and with the exception of Sir Pidge, they are all feeble, which means their melee damage has a minus 2 modifier, and it costs them one extra energy to make the harvest action. Sir Pidge is only moderately better, as he is a weakling, which means he still has to spend one extra energy to harvest, but his damage modifier is only minus 1. Additionally, if their summoner is slain, these Psychopomps are also slain. So, getting your Psychopomps to do anything can be a real drain on your energy stores, but that negative is offset by considerable benefits. For a start, Psychopomps don't take up slots in your team, and depending on how many you summon, you could end up with double the number of bodies on the battlefield compared to your opponent. This makes it easy to form defensive lines, creating blockades that your opponent will find it hard to get through. Bear in mind, every time a rival moves within engagement range of a Psychopomp, they will be forced to stop in their tracks, and that can easily turn an orchestrated speedy advance into a slog. Furthermore, some abilities cannot be used while engaged, so your sneaky Psychopomps could prevent enemy archers from firing, or force them to waste energy getting away. In other words, Psychopomps are exactly what you expect. They are a nuisance. They get in the way and act like gremlins in your opponent's well-oiled military machine. And if that wasn't bad enough, these Psychopomps are disposable. Several Shades characters get stronger when an ally dies, so it is absolutely acceptable to kill one of these little guys, gain the relevant buffs, and then simply summon the deceased Psychopomp back into play. And all of that is before you consider each Psychopomp's unique abilities. Brave Sir Pidge we have already seen in my review of the Shades faction, as he is one of the two Psychopomps included in the starter set. He has the keyword Soldier and Animal, and he is the only Psychopomp with any chance of holding his own in a fight. He is melee 2, range 1 inch, arcane 0, and evade minus 1. He has just a single wound, but he does have plate armour which reduces all non-magical damage by minus 2. 
His one ability is Noble Challenge, which costs one energy and once per turn lets him target one enemy within one inch to engage in melee. He gets a plus three modifier to his melee stat for that attack, and if he is attacking a Noble, he cannot take any damage, making it a risk-free strike. The second Psychopomp from the starter is Flay, Bearer of Knowledge. He is melee 1, range 1 inch, arcane 4 and evade minus 1, with 2 wounds. He has the keyword, Familiar. Flay's big deal is boosting his friend's arcane stat. His Forbidden Tome ability means that as long as he stays within 2 inches, his summoner gains plus 1 arcane stat. Once per turn, he can also share the knowledge, which costs 2 energy. If he plays a blue card, a target model within 2 inches increases their arcane stat by 1 for the rest of the turn. On a catastrophe, the target reduces their arcane stat by 2 instead. Next up we have another Psychopomp familiar, Lampy Darkson. His stats are melee 1, range 1 inch, arcane 4 and evade minus 1. He has 2 wounds. Lampy is a sentient lamp, and his Lampy's light ability shines out in a 3 inch radius. Remember, the battles for Moonstone are fought at night, as that is when the Moonstone blooms. So Lampy is illuminating the darkness, giving all enemy models within range plus one evade stat. If you are struggling to get Lampy into position, you can also use his ability A Little More Oil, which costs one energy and can be used once per turn. If played with a green card, the range of his light increases by X inches, where X is the value of the card making it possible to illuminate an area with a 6 inch radius. Unfortunately, on a catastrophe, Lampy goes out and it takes him the rest of the turn to get a new flame going. Our fourth Psychopomp is the Terrible Musician, who has the keyword Soldier and Musician. He is melee 1, range 1 inch, arcane 3, evade minus 1 and he has 2 wounds. Once per turn, he can make a Dreadful Din. This costs 1 energy and targets 1 model within 6 inches. If played with a green card, the target suffers minus one melee stat until the end of the turn. If played with a blue card, the target suffers minus one arcane stat until the end of the turn. If played with a red card, the target model is moved X inches directly away, where X is the value of the card. On a catastrophe, the resisting player can move the musician two inches instead. An interesting aspect of the Dreadful Din is that it isn't reserved for targeting enemies. You could, if you wanted to, use the Musician to force march one of your own characters. Gaining up to 3 inches of movement could make the difference between snagging a Moonstone or preventing an enemy charge. Next is the truly ridiculous Tea Cake of Torment, which has the keyword food. It's melee 1, range 1 inch, arcane 0 and evade minus 1. It has 2 wounds. The Tea Cake is basically a portable medikit. It can use its Eat Me ability for 1 energy to restore 2 wounds to a friendly target model within 2 inches. However, the Tea Cake then suffers a wound. That's understandable, it is being eaten after all. Fortunately, the Tea Cake does have a way of extending its working life on the battlefield. It uses 1 energy to play Leave to Rise until double in size. The Tea Cake restores 1 wound to itself, but cannot do anything else for the rest of the turn. So, pretty straightforward stuff but I really like that balancing act between healing others and healing the tea cake, and making that decision about whether it is worth destroying the tea cake in order to heal a friendly character immediately. But we have saved the best for last, because it's time to introduce the one and only fantastically flippered Lord of the Deep, Jeremy. He is melee 1, range 1 inch, arcane 0, evade minus 1, and he has 2 wounds. His keywords are animal and aquatic. He is, in effect, a mobile water cannon. He has the water foot ability that lets him ignore water features while moving, like a genuine muddy mudskipper. And then if he ends his turn inside a water feature, he can use Behold My Splashy Fury for one energy. It inflicts two magical damage on a target within two inches. No need to pull cards. The downside here is, of course, obvious. You need water features. Luckily, Sonara, the Undead Mermaid, can create 50mm water features as a special ability, and she starts with a friendly aquatic psychopomp in play, making her and Jeremy a match made in Moonreach. And that's your lot, six cool little critters that aren't just useful additions to a Shade Force, but an integral part of many of the faction's strategies. This box set does not come with the new starter set, Mine was kindly provided for review by the good folk at Goblin King Games, but these Psychopomps are available to order right now. 
I will put a link to the web store in the video description below. And that is it from me for now, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.